this is Victor. I'm here with a new video, and this time we are going to talk how to paint the the war bike of the of the orcs. Okay, we are going to paint a orc war bike. This is a knob of the unit, so we are going to paint a, another orc following more or less the same color scheme. So we are going to go for the evil suns. So it's mainly red with some um, yellow, but as well a lot of weathering and scratches and so on. So I'm going to, I, I have primed the miniature in black okay and from here we are going to start working and the next step I'm going to do I'm going to use um, this one iron breaker and we are going to do all the metallic parts in iron breaker. Okay I do this before gluing the miniature on the on the base so I have good access to all the parts and then I will glue it. So I uh, we are going to part uh, put all these things on the wheels on, on metallics we are going to do other parts so we are going to do all this work with the metallic we try to be thin metallic over black should work perfectly without any problem and yeah and, and it's up to you how much metal you want to do on who so what are the parts that you want to do in metallic, what are the parts that you want to leave in black and what parts are you thinking to do in red, okay? So I'm going to do almost all the bottom parts, the front part I like to do it in red, this protection here in red and the bridge or the thing that they have at the back in red, the weapons uh, they will go in metallic and yeah, the, the, the foil tank will go in metallic, in metallic in red, so uh, you will see, okay? So I'm going to apply all the parts that are metallic and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to use Mephisto in red and we are going to do the parts that we want in red, okay? So we have here the mic. So I'm going to do the front panel, the front, this front thing in red. I will do, I also like to do some parts on the wheels. And we are going to paint as well in red the front wheel protection or the front wheel armor. Okay. I will try to leave some parts that will go in metallic unpainted, but I will not bother myself too much. Okay, so I just paint it. What you can see. Okay, so I'm going to do all the red parts like this one here. I will do as well the tongue, the back tongue, this one, and I will do this, the weapon, the, the thing that is holding the weapon in position. Okay, again, we try to be thin, be careful that we don't do uh, brush strokes, but this black should be quite easy to cover with my piston. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to use XV88 and we are going to do the seat or the saddle of the bike. Okay, this part here. I'm going to do this and as well I will do this one. Okay. We'll do that. And I'm back for the next step. Okay, next I'm going to use Averland Sunset. And we are going to use this to, to paint some of the glyphs the orcs have and to paint some free hands, okay, some like patterns and things that I like to add to the orcs. So first we are going to paint for example this lining here. Okay. We have another lining on the other side.
you can see that um, with the XV88 they also did this handle and these straps there, okay? So and then I'm going to paint as well this type of leaves that are here. And yeah, then you look for a place where you, if you want to add some type of of freehand, additional freehand that you would like to do. So I'm just looking now where it makes sense. So for example, I like to add some flames here. So you like that, and then I do like this. Then I do like that. And you want to make it thin at the end. Okay, you can make it some here and there. Or if you want, you can do a checkered pattern. For example, one thing that you can do, we can make this yellow and black checkered. So we can take, split this first in two, like that, then we go down, I will split this one like that, okay, we do this yellow, This is yellow. So this is quite big checks. This yellow. And you can add more patterns. It all depends how much yellow you want to add. If you go too far with the yellow that I think here, I don't like too much how the flames look like. I come back with the red. And I thin down the yellow, right? So you wait that it dries, and you can just use the same red that we used before to reshape it. So you want to keep the red as the main color. So the other thing is, I also did the jaws here, but these jaws I will keep it as. You can see I will not do any check it, but I think this one because we are going to put metallic on all these type of things. So yeah, maybe I will do flames on the on one flame on the other side, just to be more symmetric. But you, for example, here you can add just one flame. I don't know. It's up to everybody. Yeah, I was thinking if I want to do more, but you can also do another 300 that is very, very easy to do. Are small triangles. This one is tricky because we have the. Yeah, we can do it like that, for example. You can do like a small triangles, something like that. It's up to you what type of patterns and things you want to do and how much. And these are all, so you don't need to be perfect. Later on we are going to, to weather all these things, so they will be damaged on top. So if you don't do them perfectly, it's not going to be that noticeable anymore later on. Okay. So, but anyway, I'm trying to improve here. 
and then as you see if when you do three angles you just see that some are not very sharp you can you come later on with the background color and you sharpen the three angles where is needed Okay. And I think like that is enough yellow on this bike, to be fair. So next we are going to do some damage. And to do damage I'm going to use the Corbus Black first. Okay, And with the Corbus Black, you can also use Abaddon Black if you want it. I'm going to... Yeah, you can use sometimes... Um, the sponge um, weathering, but here I want to be more precise, so I will add some like damage like that in some places. Okay. The only point is that you have to remember where you have put that because we are com we will come later on. For example, here we can put it on the corner. We'll come later on with silver and with lighter red to make it more visible. Okay. You can make like here will be the front, so you can make some impact, for example, there, and the impact goes to the side, the scratching. Okay. If you can do more things. So we will keep adding some scratches here and there for example here on the next to the light where you see damage you can add additional damage at the black okay is the right places where you can because then you will do the the damage I think I look if there is here damage done by sculpt then as well, normally the most exposed part you want to do some, for example here, we'll expect this part will be damaged quite easily, right? You can expect that this will do something like that. You can also expect that it will do something like that, right? You you hit some stones and some damages, okay, especially the edges. You do try to do it randomly. Right? For example on the Here I will expect the less damage is a more protected area. So you can add, for example, some scratch on some if they have just touched here, but I will not expect the damage. I will expect more damage, more impacts on the weapons and all this back part here. For example, connect some like dots there, add here in the border. So as I said, do it as you like it, and do the scratches that don't do too much, it will be my recommendation, because then if not the red will disappear, but do some, I think it's nice to do some scratches here and there, and, and just add some additional weathering to these guys. Okay. So I will keep doing that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, so once we have done all the scratches with the black, next I'm going to use again Iron Breaker. And we are going to fill these scratches, these different damages, with the Iron Breaker color. Take a, quite a thin brush, you will need some precision. And what we are we want to do is, we fill, for example, this. Yeah, this is not the best brush, by the way. So we, you want to fill, no, I will take, oh no, not a brush, this is damage. 
these cheap brushes do what they do and then they are over so I'm going to do for example this one here okay you can see we do this and we put the second light it's going to be better I'm going to do for example this one like that so you want to leave a little bit of the black or the corpus black we have applied before you want to be again irregular here you want to do this you want to play with the patterns and try to do and then on the black parts I will do the same but there yeah you don't have you don't, yeah you didn't apply black because it makes no sense right so you want to do some scratch and damage as well on the black so the ambulance is not just starting we are going to do as well these spikes that we have everywhere on the bike and I will do as well these small rivets for example here okay you want to do all these damages the rivets then as well on, on this for example on the foil tank I will go inside and do the small nails that are inside of the tank okay the, the small things I will do for example this scratch here as I, say, I don't want to do too many scratches because then you start losing all the paint job that and everything starts to be for me too too messy I like to make it messy but <laughs> So I wanted to make to look damaged, but I also want to keep the definition of the different parts. I don't want to have a big a mess of um, silver, reds, and so on. So I want to keep some coherency, right? So as you can see, I do all these spikes in metallics, and then yeah, we have, for example, here all the scratches at the bottom of this air bent so you want to so to put all this you want to add the scratch then here we have done this type of scratch I will look like that okay if in some cases you rem you cover completely the black it's not a big deal but the idea is that you leave always a little bit of black up down somewhere so this will give Will, will give depth to the, the to the damage. Okay, and again here we we do the rivets in these ones. So this nail there. We did here some damage, so we want to put this like that. Okay, and I will keep doing that. So I will do this for all the different parts we have on this bike, and I'm back for the next step. So once we have done all. The, the scratches you can see looks more weathered you you see the front of uh, it did there are all the different metallic heads and so on now I'm going to use Agrax air shade and we are going to apply this all over the bike okay so we are going to do start for example I will do up to the seat and then I will do the weapons and the other parts at the end so we are starting from here for example and we start applying Aquax Airshade. So we will do that on all the bike. Then we wait at this device and I will be back once this has died. Okay, especially the wheels, you want to do it. Okay, so I'm doing that and I'm back. So once the watch has died, now we are going to use Corn Red, Mephiston Red and Wild Rider Red. With this recall, we are going to start doing the highlights. And the, and the work on the right of the bike. So what I will do is I will start with first with corn red to clean up the red in some areas to make it a little bit brighter because it's very dull now and then I will use Mephiston red to do a little bit of edge highlight I will go at the bottom of the scratches and create some shade as well here for example I will follow this scratch and then finally I use Wild Rider Red 
and this one that is almost orange you want to do some edge highlight and you give a little bit of 3D shape to the scratches okay so let's keep working as I said I like to start with Mephiston red to clean up uh, Mephiston sorry with corn red to clean up a little bit all the whites that have been make the red very dull, very dark. You want to give a little bit of life to the red. And then we use Mephiston. In some part where we want some additional highlight. And finally we do edge highlight with the wild rider red and if it's needed in that case I will take a little bit of corn to smooth the transition okay or we let it dry and then we later on we are going to touch it so we keep working like that it's up to your taste how much you want to highlight with each color but you keep doing like that all the right okay so I have I'm playing between corn let me zoom out a little bit okay like that so we play within the corn and mephiston and then the last color we use is always the white rider red to add this extra brightness to make the red more vibrant so we go there You can see we are going to take now here a little bit of oil rider and I will follow for example here this damage keep working like that so it's in areas like here that I did not have a good coverage with the wild rider right I would sorry with the with the no wild rider right I was meaning with the aquax edge shade so what I will do is I will take a little bit of and uh, Reynolds height a uh, uh, dark brown and I will glaze it on top okay in that way I achieve the dark color on top here I can go dark because this is quite a damn uh, dirty part and now I take red and I did not wait that the brown is dry I just go over the brown and I just create this type of very dark red mixed with brown that will sell quite nicely here that I wanted to have because this is 
probably a dirty part of the bike. Okay. We will collect all the dust data and we are going to do some weathering. So if you are wondering, yeah, later on we are going to do some weathering. Again, you can use a, always a little bit of brown if you want it to make the red much darker. And now we just here I want to keep it dark. Okay, in this part on the bottom part. On the other side, we put some this brown here just to have it for later. On the other hand, the tank I want to go with a brighter color, so I will go with Mephisto red directly and highlight it. And we are going to do like that, okay. So now I will keep working the red as you see here until I'm happy with the tonality of the red I have on the bike and once I have done that we are going to go for the yellow. Okay, next step I'm going to work again on the, on the yellow and I'm going to use Avalanche Sunset to clean up a little bit the yellow. Okay, so we, we just go with off over with Avalanche Sunset and just to add some brightness to make the yellow more vibrant. You can see, although Avalon Sunset is quite it's quite a dark yellow when applied over the white yellow, it looks mm, brighter. Want to be careful. Again. Not to overdo, but okay. you want these things to pop up a little bit. Okay. Especially these small leaves. This one here, you want it to pop it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's do now the lights. We can do the horns. So, for the horns, I'm going to apply a flake one flash. horns or fans or what this type of decoration that he has here I'm going to apply flat one flash And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Rhinos Hide. I'm 
we are going to do the tips of the holes. Sorry. Now I'm going to take. Um, I will first clean up this one that I forgot here. It leaves some black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. We use this texture to the horn. Just playing with the flayed one flesh and the Rhinos height. No one taking again Rhinos height. Just adding a little bit on the tip as well. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other phone and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next I'm going to work on the lights and for that I'm going to use Dawn Yellow and Flash Git Yellow. So I start with Dawn Yellow and I will apply it on this light. Like that. Okay. Now we will take flash kit yellow and I will apply it around. And I will do, as you can see, the inside of this thing. I will do as well this. Like that. In reality, the grid will not be visible if you have a bright light. But if you want to show the grid a little bit, what you can do is... Yeah, in that case, I will not do anything because the grid, by diffraction, will not be visible if the light is on. So the grid is only visible if the light is off. So I will leave it like that. I think it will make more sense. This thing next with, I will think it as a sensor, so we can make it like orange or any color that you like. Let, let's do it. Yeah, I will do it orange. And this one here, I will consider it as a 
light. You know this was done in the lights to avoid that in the night the reflections were or well, in the day mainly the reflections were showing your position so I will just put it as almost as a off light in the case. Okay, we'll just do it like that. And then I will use black to alright. Let's keep working. So I'm using orange on this thing. And then I will go brighter at the bottom. Like if I will use the same technique as a gem, so I'm going to use a yellow at the bottom. Okay. I will put darker color on the top, like a dark brown or black, something like that. And then I take a very bright yellow. The dawn yellow that we use for the night, and I will do like that. Then you have this like that. I think like that will look good. I take a little bit of more dawn yellow now, and I do second layer on the middle. I just want really the middle to look bright. Then I will take a little bit of of white, and I will go even more on the middle. Something like that. And then we have a right point. And then the other one, I leave it as this dark. I, just, I imagine that this, the light is off. He only put one light on. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Let's do the panel. The panel, you have different options. So, what I will do is I will do the panel. I will not go for white, I go for a very light gray. Okay, even lighter than that. I think I will go for uh, a mini stratum gray, not the other one. Yeah, a mini stratum gray. This is the color I wanted. Okay, it's really a, a light gray. And then I will put as well on my palette. A little bit of black, no, then adding colors because I will need it. It's Corvus black, that is a, I call it black, but it's in reality a very dark gray. But it will work as a black on the bike. So, what we are going to do with that, I'm going to apply first the very light gray here on this where we have this I will try not to paint the needle or well, I don't know how it's called the the thing that is marking the position then I will take red and I will add some red here in one side Imagine that this is the RPM and these are the limit of the RPM. So I put some right there. Then we can make here like a right light. So we had we use Mephisto right Mephisto right yes. Okay. Because this is a light, we will use different techniques. So I'm going to use now orange and then yellow. To make it look brighter. And this here here, this thing here, I don't know, we can put like a number, for example, or we can pull like a radar, so we can go for a very dark green first. I 
I want I will use it more like a house pack or something like that. And then we take a, a very light green, mood green. We do something like that. Now we'll take the dark red again. The dark green, sorry. They will make this dot smaller. You don't want to do too much. Then we can put another red button. This is the boost. Button here. Thing like that should be good enough to make the panel look interesting it's up to everybody how much you want to make how much you want but I don't like to overload the panel with the tails I don't think they will go with a lot of fancy colors and now that we are working on, on the black region so we can highlight the black so first I use Corvus black okay once then I use this is the stone vermin four I think it's called let me check Oishing Grey no it's not the Oishing Grey it's the stone vermin four Okay, and when we have small highlights to do, we use downstone. For some edge highlights. Right. Where we have not done, if there is part where we have not done weathering, okay. So for example here I need to put some water on my stone burn before. So I'm going to put too much some stone burning for here and as well here and now we are going to take some downstone I don't have too much black to highlight at the end, you can see that most of the black was now the end weathered. Oh, we got other colors. But we are going to do some edge highlighting here, some there, so some more aggressive than the others. It's up to you. Between the stone burning full and down stone is what I'm going to use mainly. Okay, so we'll keep work. The wheels, are, uh, the tires, I will not do anything. Ah, here we have. So this I will consider like an air vent. So I will put like that. Okay. Okay, so I will keep working on that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, we have work on the black. Now I'm going, I was forgetting this thing here. 
I'm going to apply a white color, it's the um, flake one flesh. So it's um, not really white, it's like more cream color. Okay. We are going to do this anyway. But I guess it's put there because there is a small leak. So what is the best way to fix a leak? Putting a piece of cloth around it. I'm believing that this will solve the problem because the orcs, they believe it happens. So here we have the neighbor dog. The background noise. So here we put this flake one flies on this piece of cloth to let it dry. While this is drying, I'm going to use again XV88. Okay. The same base color we use for all the brown straps. And we are going to add this on the on this part. And then we're going to do the same here. Because here is this is the handle where we will not have hand. Where it goes the hand, normally you cut it away. What you do is you put is V88 like that. And if needed I will use a little bit of Rinus height in the middle. Try to make it darker. So I will do that. Like that, and now we use a contrast paint. We can use agar dunes. And we apply it there. We just want to dirt on this thing. I want to do dirt. So I put it there and from the other side. And here we are. We have this done. Now I will wait that all these device because I will start putting some pigments. And in the meantime, what I will do is I will as if we work the right on the bike, I will work the right here. So it's the same way, okay? So here we are going to do the same we have done on the rest of the bike, and I'm back. Okay, so I have done this front part. I glue it on the bike, 
and you see how it's looking like. Now, now we are going to work with the powders and I will start with this color that is called dark sand that will create the sun okay yeah, it's, it's quite similar to sun this one I'm going to use this powder dry so how we use it dry so let me just maybe we'll take my palette out for a moment just to show you how I use this okay as you can see I put this paper so I can collect the powder and avoid that everything is contaminated with the so we have it here, dry. Okay. And we just take with the brush like that. We remove some. The brush has to be completely dry, and then it's like applying dust. Okay. This is why I put this paper because it will. It's going to be dirty. You can see the dust that is coming out of this. Then we are going to apply it on all the parts that we will see will get dirty with this type of dust. Okay, so for example, this cable, of course, all the wheel. But not just the wheel, I want to go here inside. Of course the wheel will throw dust to all these parts here. The bottom part of the bike. And then I will go to the back and I will put it here as well. You want to put some there. Because all this will become full of dust if it's running in a desertic area. Okay. I will not overdo. So I will just this way. We're starting this red part here at the bottom. Don't worry too much. Because it will, it, it will end up quite dusted and I will focalize on the bottom of the bike. I will not go up. I understand that if you are running in the desert, everything will become dusty. But as I said, if you don't want to you know, overdo and make everything look the same, right? So you just want to emphasize this at the bottom. And as well, next to the wheels, the wheels you have to be sure that we dust them quite well. And then the weapons, the inside of the weapons, you can also put some. And the bottom, a little bit. You can take back the dust that comes from here, you can see. You will lose a lot of dust here and there. This is quite normal. This time I will pick up dust or boulders. As I said, I will not do too much over the engine or of other weapons. Okay, this is applying the the powders dry. Now what you can do is remove the excess. Remember the powders can be removed If you have the feeling that you have too much, but I think like that we have a nice dust, a nice effect everywhere. Ok, 
Okay, what we are going to do next? I'm going to clean this brush now. I also recommend to change water after using powders. We are going to cap that, but I don't know where I put the cap at the end. You don't want you don't want accident with this bottle, with this pots. Now I'm going to take my wet my palette, sorry, my normal palette. You see here I have a little bit, so I want I would I would put a little bit more of this black suit. And what we are going to do here. So I'm taking first a little bit of this thing. Put it here a little bit more. Let me maybe just move the camera and I show you better. Oh, better, oh, even better. I will turn the palette. No, I need to move the camera. So let me move like that. So you can see better what I'm doing. So you can see here I have all this black thing. This does not have water. What I'm going to do now is I will take water. And I will move it here. Now with the pipette I will take a little bit more of water. And I will mix it. We have this almost like a wash consistency. So you want you want it a little light and you start applying this on the jaw spine. This will be very dull when it's dry. So you have to apply this with measure, okay? I applied a lot on the here and I will apply it as well on the weapons, on the bends of the weapons and as well on the cannon on the muzzle we mean. Okay. You do the same on the other side. I recommend to thin it down quite a lot. You always it will dry very fast. So it's better to do it in two steps if you don't feel sure than trying to make a heavy step. Okay. Like that should be okay. And now what I like to add, you see here I have some, sorry, I have some brown as well here. So I'm going to take water. This will activate again these powders. And I will add even more, a little bit. This is going to be more like oxidation. So I take a lot of water, you want it with a lot of water. And you apply it like oxidation where you want to create this effect of weathered old metal. Again, I go with a lot of water, I put my brush on water and then I put it on the on the powders. So in that way I have a lot of water with very little pigments. If you don't do that, then I can't even take water if I see that there is too much. And we just with the water, I move it around, okay? Uh, when it dries, it will be more, less opaque than what it looks like now. But don't put too much, don't overdo. Because it's not everything will look brown and you don't want that. Okay? Now, I will on the exit of the exhaust pipe. I will add more soot. So I'm adding again black with a little bit of water, so accumulate a little bit more black there. Now we are going to wait that this dries. 
and I will be back. Okay, so this is how it looks like now that it has dried. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, go with a brush and remove a little bit the excess. You can go with a very soft to start or we can then change to a harder one. We can change to this to this harder. And if you want, you want to eliminate more, you can always moisture a little bit your brush and you will eliminate much more. But I don't want to do that. I just want to eliminate a little bit. But I have, oh, you see, I need to glue this again. Okay, that's the problem. And that's all. So this is all what I do in this first part of the tutorial. So we have done the bike, it's quite dirty, it's quite dusted, I think I, I, it's what I was looking here for the orcs and keep tuned because in the next part we are going to paint the rider. Okay. So I hope you have enjoyed this one, here another look on the mic, I hope you have liked it, please give a like if you have liked this video, share if you think other people can be interested and as usual Thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!